Okay, this battle takes place in a power plant. I'm going to be giving you some idea of why I do what I do. To begin with, at the beginning of the battle, you can turn around and see what's going on and see where you are and see who else is on your team and what kind of uh, equipment they've got. So I'm running this BOA. The BOA has an Orcan on the left and a Thunder on the top. I've been uh, sort of disappointed in Power Plant when uh, we get dropped like this and nobody else comes with me over to the boat to take that beacon. And then I get all the way over there and I don't quite make it. I've decided to change course here, seeing as how many people are going that way. And I'm going to go help that uh, uh, ally named iPad. He's running um, a rhino and taking the beacon up uh, to the north of us um, by himself. Now, as you can see right here, there's that crossed out eye. That means that there are stalkers up ahead. Uh, and those are uh, difficult to kill. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's two stalkers you can see. Now, you can see me hesitate. The reason for that is that the stalker's stealth lasts for eight seconds. And so if you wait a second or so before engaging them, which I had the opportunity to do here, then uh, their stealth doesn't last as long while you're standing right there in front of them. So at this point, I know there's the other stalker. So again, I'm, I'm hesitating for just a second. And I'm firing with just the thunder because the Orkin rockets won't be able to lock onto it while its stealth is activated. They'll just sail right past it. So I have now a few seconds before its stealth recharges. So now I come over here and hit it with the um, thunder and the uh, Orkan, and then I can turn around and take out another uh, another robot there. Now we've got a rhino coming after us. Uh, luckily, my friend iPad is still over there to the right, which means that we can attack it from two sides. Yeah, it's much better, particularly with rhinos, to attack from two sides because they're more vulnerable uh, from the side and from the back where they don't have a shield. Now at this point, since we've got an advantage um, in this area, an advantage in numbers, and there's not anybody really up on that hill, the, the enemy spawn point, I'm going to take this chance uh, to go capture that beacon. You can see there's a Patton coming after me, and someone behind me is paying attention and has just launched rockets at it. So I'm going to take the beacon, uh, which I, I'm putting myself at risk by walking out kind of in the open like this. Uh, I can tell that this Patton has uh, Magnum guns, and it turns out it also has uh, two pinatas. So it'll launch its pinatas here in a minute and do a good bit of damage to me. But uh, I'm able to take it out, and then the um, Fury there uh, gets me instead. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, this is now my uh, Vityaz with a Thunder and two CRV pins. It's configured for longer range than the BOA. The BOA was configured for, say, 300 meters. The pins uh, are good up to 500 meters. Uh, so what I usually do here is launch a few pins at uh, a distance, and then as I approach, I can switch over to uh, relying on the Thunder. So you can see right there, I've launched some pin rockets, and we're about to get rid of that guy Spectre, so I'm going to turn my attention somewhere else. There's a beacon in the middle there that needs to be taken. There's a couple people going there, and you can see that there's some action coming from the north, so I'm going to go over there and help them. Now, if you'll notice, that tower was a real obstacle. These train cars aren't really there. That's one of the confusing things about these maps, is that some of the landscape is physically there, and some of it you can just walk right through. Um, and I always lose track of uh, which is which. Now, if you can see on the right, there's an eye and another arrow. Those are two stalkers from my team that are coming this way. So there's now three of us in this area working on this beacon. Uh, you can see the stalkers are going off that way. There's a um, griffin behind here. The stalker, Apollyon, is going to the left, so I'm going to go to the right and try to catch it in a crossfire. Uh, 
and sure enough, there we go. And luckily for us, friendly fire doesn't really do anything. Um, so <laughs> you can kind of shoot into a close battle and uh, generally not risk injuring your uh, your friends. So now I'm looking to go, do, I, do they need me over there? Well, you can see there there's two arrows on the right side of the screen. That means that those two stalkers are still going uh, around to the right, and it looks like they've drawn the attention of the long-range robots up on the hill. Uh, so I'm going to go help them. So you can see that there's three of them up there, um, a Raijin, and it looks like a Carnage, and you can see right here, the, the Raijin has trebuchets, and over to the left is uh, another pattern with geckos. So they're configured for long range. Robots that are configured with long range weapons are usually somewhat vulnerable if you can get close enough to them. So that's what I just did. I took out that Raijin with my Thunder, which uh, deals a lot of damage at close range. Uh, and over there, there's um, what's that? Looks like a Fury. No, that's a Griffin. And I'm able to help take that out. Uh, the um, Mexican Teniente and iPad, it turns out, have the um, most powerful equipment in this particular battle. Um, and they did the most damage. So in some sense, I was outclassed in this battle, but I felt like I contributed something to the victory.